This time on Low Boost, we're gonna try to work out some kinks on our 1953 Ford F100 pickup truck. So I wanna talk about a couple of the problems that we've had with the truck after getting it started. Well, in terms of the Fitech, the Fitech has been great. The Auto-Tune does a great job. And when you hear people complain about Holly or Edelbrock or Fitech, nine times out of 10, it's user error as to why it doesn't work. Um, that was it with us. It just didn't run right and we weren't really figuring out, couldn't really figure out why, and it got hot very quickly. When I tried to mark top dead center, I was way off. So when we finally redid it again, we did, actually didn't even get it right. We were 180 degrees off and the car wouldn't even fire at all. Uh, so then we had, then we figured it out again, top of the compression stroke, because there's four strokes. You could, you could be thinking your top dead center four ways through. Compression, ignition, uh, combustion, and exhaust. You could, and if you're not on one of those, the, the right one of those four, it's not gonna fire properly, and that's what we did. So after trying it again and again, finally got it working to where we had it, thing is running great. My buddy Damon, who's a 351 Whisperer, came over and helped us figure it out to get us to true top dead center, 10 degrees past it. I think it's about 14 degrees of timing now, which he says it'll be kind of a dud, but once we get the car driving properly, we're gonna turn up the timing a little bit and make it more rowdy. The other thing I had Damon look at was the rockers in the passenger side. My dad had taken them off because he thought it might have a blown head gasket, but turns out it was just the coolant temperature sensor that was leaking a little bit. So when I put them back on, I put them on incorrectly, and he actually took a good close look at them because it was only really running on four cylinders. As you can see here in this video, it just wasn't running right, and I had the, the rockers tightened down a little bit too much. So I had the rockers tightened down too much before I gave it half of a turn. Uh, you couldn't turn the push rods at all, which was a little bit too tight. So the best way to do this is once you know that one valve is starting to get pushed open with the push rod, you know the other one in that same cylinder is closed. So from there, you tighten it down to the point where you still can wiggle the push rod, but that there's no play. And then you tighten it down one half turn. Then you tighten down the poly lock with like an Allen key down to 26 foot pounds and then you're done. So you could do a couple of them at a time and then rotate the engine and then do it again. You should have a little bit of wiggle in the rocker as well as you still have a little bit of play in the actual push rod itself and that is exactly how it's supposed to be done. So I did it incorrectly but once Damon did that, the thing ran like a top. Check it out. The other thing we have we've been having a problem with is the starter. In typical Ford fashion, they made like two or three different starters for different years that you have, and we're having an issue where the starter is hitting the flywheel somewhere. So I'm gonna turn the engine over today to try to figure out exactly where it's hitting. Maybe I gotta shave something down. Maybe we have the wrong starter. We're gonna to try to diagnose that today. The only other issue that we're having with the truck right now is the brakes aren't great. So I'm gonna bleed them again, and one of the brake lines is leaking a hair. So I'm gonna replace that completely. I got a new brake line from Rock Auto. We'll throw that on and hopefully that's the rest of the issues we're gonna have with the truck uh, outside of it leaking, but it's an old truck. These old engines and transmissions, they just leak. We'll try to fix those issues as well. 
and get this thing driving down the road. So let's go check it out. It might be the jankiest ass system, but it might work. So I got to rotate the motor over. We got that there. I got the old Harbor Freight. See what we fucked up camera right there. And it's zip tied to the post, which I also have a light there. And it's going right in there to take a look and see if anything is hitting the starter because these teeth are chewed up on the flywheel. So I don't know if we don't, we need, maybe we need a spacer on the flywheel or something, but from there it looks okay. I'm gonna rotate the motor and let's see. See how it comes back? It's like coming back. Look how close that gets. Oh, that's not good. Oh boy. I feel like maybe if it's spinning, maybe that's what's, it's hitting something. I don't know. But that shouldn't be doing that. And that's why if it's in that position, it won't start right. Or grind. It's a boy. It's a girl. It's your flywheel hitting the starter. Crap. The flywheel teeth are chewed up pretty good. And as you can see, it's moving. So it's either bent or coming off of uh, its pivot point where it was mounted onto the engine not good either way we're gonna have to take the transmission out also the transmission is leaking from like every orifice that it can uh this is a fully rebuilt built transmission to handle you know 600 horsepower so we're gonna have to take it out thankfully now that we've done it a few times it's not as hard as it normally is so we should be able to get it out easily and then figure out what we're gonna do from there we can finish doing some other stuff on the truck but it, it starts and runs really good. So we're happy about that. We got the wheels coming in soon. A little sneak peek for that. Uh, as much as I actually don't mind the 2004 Mustang GT wheels that we also had on our 1966 Mustang, I got some better wheels. You're gonna like these wheels. Also, see this hat? You can get this hat on lowboostfilms.com. It's awesome. We got a whole bunch of other merchandise there too and car parts that we've reviewed to, that we know work well all on the website, so make sure you guys check it out, lowboostfilms.com. So needless to say, transmission's gotta come out. Nothing we can do about that. Um, the fact that it's leaking everywhere, we gotta bring it back to where we got it from and have them take a look at it. And uh, we gotta check the flywheel anyway, so we gotta take that out. We still got more stuff to do to it, put the windows in, uh, just fine tune the brakes, make, make sure they stop well. And then once we get the transmission back, it's not that hard to put it back in. It might be like a three, four hour job. Uh, we should be able to drive it. <clears throat> so we're gonna make sure everything else is ready on the truck to be able to go once it's done and we'll be able to drive it. So make sure you guys stick around for that. I'll do the diagnostic video upcoming when I get the transmission out on exactly what is going on with that flywheel. So make sure you guys stick around for that. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.